a real joy for us this morning to experience baptism. Uh, baptism is a visual symbol of God's saving work in a person's life. Baptism does not save, but it truly is a, a symbol of what God has already done and accomplished in our lives as individuals. It's an outward sign of those belonging to God's people of who have trusted and repented um, of their sins and trusted the Lord Jesus Christ. So we have two individuals that are coming to um, give their testimony and to be baptized uh, based on what God has done in their lives. Next is John Kirchner. John also has been attending RBC for about the past year and both Cindy and John have been a part of our ABF and it has been a joy to, to see them grow in, in the Lord Jesus Christ. So John, come share. Good morning. As a child raised a Catholic, I believe God to be distant and detached. During high school on my walk through the fields to school and back, I remember looking up to the sky and asking God, if you are real, show me. Not long after this, I met someone in school who seemed to be always happy. We developed a friendship and he invited me to his church. The church was very accepting of me, but very different from what I was used to. I started to read the Bible and pray and felt a closeness with God. After attending this church for a few years, the pastor was involved in a sin that led to his dismissal. I had gotten married and had children. Soon after, the church had broken up and there was a period of time when we did not attend church. Some friends who we had not seen in years contacted us and invited us to their church. It was at this time God started to melt my heart and show me his patience long-suffering and mercy. I was at peace to be back, knowing that God loved me. I wasn't there very long when I started to doubt my salvation because it seemed I had no control over my sin. Verses in the Bible condemn me, such as 1 John 3, 6. No one who abides in him keeps on sinning. No one who keeps on sinning has either seen him or known him. In 1 John 3, 8 through 9, whoever makes a practice of sinning is of the devil. No one born of God makes a practice of sinning, for God's seed abides in him, and he cannot keep on sinning because he has been born of God. And also Romans 9, 11 through 23, concerning the potter and the clay and the vessels of wrath and vessels of mercy. <clears throat> because of failure with sin, these verses and others convinced me that I neither knew God or loved God, and that I was a vessel of wrath condemned to hell. I was miserable inside. I had two choices. By killing myself, I'd be in hell sooner, or I could just wait for God to take me. I knew I could not escape for him, for he was everywhere. So I had no peace. I told no one what was going on inside of me. My wife started to attend another church with the children, and I stayed home on Sundays, waiting for the afternoon when I could spend time with the family. When the children got older, they started to spend more time with their friends and less family time. This caused a great conflict between my wife and I and the children. I felt I had lost the only thing that kept me from ending everything. I soon stopped talking to my wife and children. I had conflicts at work. And after some time, my wife filed for divorce. After the divorce, I did not speak to my wife or children. I had missed my son's and one of my daughter's wedding. I believed that I might never see them again. Then one day while driving, I stopped at a crosswalk to let the pedestrians cross when I heard someone call Dad. Just as a note, I'm still unrepentant and in sin, and God extends his hand of mercy. I looked up and over the curb to see my daughter, Michelle. I felt awkward but happy to see her. I pulled over to the curb, and she got in the passenger seat, and we talked for a while. We started to talk more often, and eventually my daughter Elizabeth, who lives out of state, came back into my life. Some more years went by, and last summer I felt God's love <clears throat> calling me with open arms, revealing his long-suffering, his mercy, kindness, and grace for me. I could not resist him. I asked God to forgive me for my sin and rebellion. I started to listen to many preachers on the radio and TV, such as Charles Stanley and John MacArthur and others. I started to get up an hour and a half earlier before I had to leave for work to read the Bible and pray. 
When I got home in the evening, I would spend more time with God. Then about late summer last year, my son Sam came back into my life. I began to see that I needed to find a church. I began praying that God would help me find one. In early fall, my daughter Michelle invited me to attend services at RBC. After the second service, I had peace about making this my church. Since attending RBC, Jesus told me to ask forgiveness for my wife, daughters, and sons as he forgave me for the sins that I have committed. They have forgiven me except my son, who I believe God will work in his life to soften his heart because at almost 60 years old, God has been long-suffering and patient with me. Therefore, who am I not to trust in the sovereign God to accomplish his work? I now have peace knowing that I am not justified by works. I come to the cross with nothing to offer. He chose me when I was not seeking him. He loved me first. And like Paul said in Galatians 1.15, but when he who had set me apart before I was born and who called me by his grace was pleased to reveal his son to me. Now when I am condemned by Satan because of sin, I come to the cross and say, I have nothing to offer, Lord. Wash me with your blood. Or I just sing just as I am without one plea, but that thy blood was shed for me. In closing, I want you to know that the sovereign God we serve preserved me despite my ignorance and sin. For those of you praying for loved ones, don't give up. He's listening to you. Trust in God's timing. In eternity, we will all get to hear the testimonies of all the saints and of how God works sovereignly all things for our good and for his glory. I want to thank all of you that I've gotten to know for your prayers, support, humility, openness, and encouragement. I now know that I am not a vessel of wrath, but a vessel of mercy, a son of the living God. Thank you. John, on the profession of your faith in Jesus Christ as your Lord and Savior, in obedience to his command, I baptize you in the name of the Father, and the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Buried with him in baptism, raised with him in newness of life. <laughs>